does and the metaverse look like in the classroom? Or should I say, what does the classroom look like in the metaverse? Well, we're not really sure yet is the true <laughs> answer to that. We're on the cusp of so much that's so exciting that it feels kind of like the dot-com revolution. And I think many of us are trying to figure it out. But I want to take you on a journey right now of what it would be like if instead of reading paragraphs about ancient Greece, you actually got to visit it and you actually got to figure out how we know so much about ancient Greece, given that we're living thousands of years later. So what if students could be active and engaged as they were learning, as opposed to passive when they're reading or listening? You know, it, 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 I, I feel like technology is just coming into classrooms. We're just getting kids to start learning how to code. How are we going to get educators and schools on board and equipped with this new technology, even when it is available? Well, I think it's going to take a little while, to be quite honest with you. The affordability is a big piece, as you mentioned. Um, the second big piece is right now the glasses are kind of clunky, but um, researchers are working on that. Technology folks are working on it. So quite soon, I think it's going to be like wearing a pair of glasses like this, and we're going to be able to <laughs> enter into new spaces and alternate realities. One key piece I want to add here, though, is that this is not meant to be a substitute for the kind of reality that we live in or for the social interactions we have in that reality. It's not a solo game. This is meant to be a space in which we can work with others and have teachers who guide us into these worlds and back again. A lot of parents, including myself, are concerned about screen time, concerned about tech addiction. Why wouldn't this make all of that worse? <laughs> well, look, tech has its good sides and its bad sides. It takes us to places that we could never go otherwise. On the other hand, if we sit around by ourselves just investigating tech, we found out that the solo doesn't work so well for human beings because we have a socially integrated brain, and that's how we learn. So I think what we need to move to are more collective kinds of environments that prop, prompt social interaction rather than taking over for it. They can't be substitutes. And that's going to be true as we go along. It's the same as nutrition. Um, how are we going to stop our kids from eating dessert? Well, we have to set limits and say, you know, you got to eat the broccoli. <laughs> now, what about uh, concerns about privacy and protecting our, our children in these new worlds, given that much of this uh, technology is going to be deployed by big tech companies, some of which don't have the best records on privacy. Boy, isn't that, isn't that true? I think at the beginning, um, you know, it would be wonderful if a lot of this were through the gating of education systems so that teachers would work together to pick wonderful experiences that our kids could learn from and enjoy and that they could be guides in. Um, what I don't think we want to create is something that's a total free-for-all, because I worry, like you do, that uh, many of these new technologies can get out of hand. So let's move slowly this time, and let's try to think it out before we just thrust it in the marketplace. I spoke with the Attorney General of New Mexico yesterday, Hector Balderas, who's sounded the alarm about kids' privacy when it comes to technology in the current world. He's actually sued yes. Google uh, about how they used student data even, even before the pandemic uh, ever happened because, you know, a lot of the technology that schools are using, it's free software, free technology, um, because a lot of these schools are under-resourced. He's very concerned about regulation and whether or not lawmakers can figure out how to regulate current technologies. Take a listen to what he had to say. I think technology is a great equalizer in terms of education outcomes, but we are not regulating these companies and we are not regulating safety and these safeguards within these technology products. What do you think about Dr. Hirsch, that Dr. Hirsch Pasek, given that, you know, obviously we want everyone to have the benefit of these technologies, but they also need to be fairly and appropriately regulated but regulation is up to lawmakers who don't necessarily understand the technology that they're trying to regulate. Well, I think we're going to have to help train them. And I think it's really important. I couldn't agree more with what I just heard. I think there has to be some regulation to make this safe.
for parents and for children. And I think we have to deal with that up front. In the same way, we have to make sure that there's quality, quality experiences in the metaverse. Again, as I suggested to you, we have to have some gatekeeping. And a free-for-all that just says anything goes is dangerous for children. And as a parent, I would be scared too. I'm with you. Hmm. Then there's the equity piece. And you know, so oh, much yes. of tech and classrooms. Oh, yes. Right, like so much of tech in classrooms is not equitable. Some students yeah. have access to these things, some students don't. If you don't have access, there can be these huge learning gaps. I mean, when it comes to something like the metaverse and technology that's you know so advanced, are you concerned this could, could lead to even more, even bigger sort of class divides in education? Well, as we suggested in our paper, this is something we definitely have to have to look at. Look, we're on the cusp of something, and the classrooms aren't really ready, nor the schools yet, for taking on the metaverse. So I think we have some lead time here to really think about how we want to introduce it. What should the school classroom look like? How should we retrain in teaching, uh, teaching professional development? How do the teachers get on board so they help us in the training? How do we bring scientists in? So what we're presenting on the metaverse really is of high quality for children. Now, in the interim, it may be something like an IMAX, and it may be that communities will adopt a certain place where schools can take their kids on field trips and visit areas they could have never visited otherwise. So I think there's tremendous potential. And while I appreciate that um, your concentration today is more on the risks and the safety and the oh no's, I think we have to put together the oh no's and the oh my goshes and see if we can create an optimal product that will be safe for children and will bring everyone in at a cost that will be reasonable. So let's uh, leave then on the oh my goshes. What uh, are you most excited about and where do you think we will realistically be, let's say five years from now? I think five years from now, we will have more affordable products that allow us to visit the metaverse. I don't think classrooms will be quite ready yet, but I do think we could set up community centers that people could take field trips in. And I think the, oh my gosh, for me, is that a lot of things that were otherwise kind of boring to learn for kids might then be excited. And if we can bring more joy and more experience and more energy into classrooms and into learning experiences, children will not only learn what we're teaching them, but they will learn how to learn. And since the world is changing so, so very quickly, that's a skill that everyone needs.